as a kid, did you try to avoid doing chores? I know that I did. I, I hated chores, you know. They'd be like, time to do dishes. And I'd be like, I'm going to go to the washroom right now and not help out. Maybe that was you. Maybe not. Maybe you were just a holy kid that did chores really well. But if not, keep watching this video. Hi, my name is Matt Marku, and this is Trail Mix with Pure Witness Ministries. Now, one of the chores that I disliked the most growing up was window washing. Worst chore ever. Now, maybe it was just because in the house that I grew up, we had a lot, a lot of windows. But we kids would always try to avoid this job. We would say things like, the windows aren't actually that bad. Maybe just spot wash the really bad handprints and call it good enough. And eventually, though, the inevitable would always come and window washing day would be upon us. Now, no matter how much we denied the dirt on those windows beforehand, there was no denying the difference a good cleaning would make, revealing just how much dirt and had like actually been on those windows. Looking out through our newly cleaned windows, we'd be amazed at how much brighter everything looked outside, how much clearer the view and bolder the colors were. It was like looking at the world through a whole new lens. And the house seemed that much brighter when the sun shone through those freshly cleaned windows. We were always in awe at just how much dirt and grime would accumulate on the windows between window washing days and just what a difference it made to clean it all off. I got thinking about window washing the other day and just what a good analogy that makes for our life regarding to our souls and the effects of sin. You see, that window pane is much like our souls. It is the lens by which we look out at the world. And it's also the opening by which the light of God shines through us. Now, when that window pane starts to get smudged up and collects that layer of fine dirt and grime, our view becomes cloudy. Much like when sin starts to smudge our souls and taint our view of the world. Now, if there's a big enough sin on our soul, like a really big smudge on the window, we might pay attention to that and get to reconciliation to wipe it clean. But somehow we can let all that fine dust and grime collect for a long time unnoticed. Now, in this imperfect analogy, I think that layer of dust and grime that collects on our soul is like the many venial sins we commit that go mostly unnoticed in the course of our daily living. Often those little sins grow out of our bad habits. The little vices that we don't pay any attention to because they don't make a, any big and obvious smudge on the window panes of our souls. For example, losing your temper procrastinating, giving into laziness, or dipping into the gossip that's going around. It could be a hundred different things that add up to the many bad habits that we form while still thinking, I'm a pretty good person after all. And the problem about these little sins or bad habits is that we get used to them being a part of our lives. We just, just a part of, you know, our personality and we can be quite content living with them as long as we're not doing anything really bad. Just like the buildup of fine dirt on a window doesn't stop us from seeing out altogether. We can feel like we're getting along just fine and pay no attention to those small sins that are born out of our bad habits. But the reality is that those bad habits are stopping you from seeing your neighbor clearly. And they are blocking the fullness of the light of God's love that is meant to shine through you to others. St. Catherine of Siena said, Be who God created you to be and you will set the world on fire. You, living with your bad habits, is not who God created you to be. It's not enough for us to say, Well, I, I just lose my temper. I'm just a procrastinator. I'm just, insert the bad habit you don't want to deal with. That just amounts to a bunch of excuses 
that stop us from taking responsibility for our sins. And until we start to take responsibility, we won't begin to make the changes we so desperately need if we are going to become who God created us to be. But change is hard. It, it takes work. And it isn't going to happen if we don't even recognize the need. Much like us kids avoiding window washing day because it was such a big, hard job. Getting down to dealing with the, the sin in our life, big and small, is only going to happen if we actually recognize the need. So if you are struggling to see what bad habits you have allowed to creep on, onto the window pane of your soul, it might be that you are keeping the window pane in the shadows. Windows never look that dirty in the night. But when we stand in the light of the day, or quite literally, the light of Christ, all those smudges and all that nasty grime becomes very apparent. Nothing is hidden in his light. Saints knew this, and it's why so many of them made a daily examination of conscience and why they went to confession so frequently. They allowed the light of Christ to shine into their lives, expose the smudges and grime, and then get it all cleaned up regularly. St. John Paul II went to confession weekly. St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, I must go to confession with love because I have an, an opportunity to make my soul clean, to become pure. Clearly, she understood the need to keep her window pane clean and pure, to allow the light of Christ to shine through her. And this, in turn, allowed her to see out through a clear view all those whom the Lord had placed in our life to serve and to love. And she did it with a sense of humor of a saint, because she also had this little gem to say, only to confession can we go as sinners with sin and come out as sinners without sin. We are all a work in progress. We are all sinners, make no mistake. And our job of window washing won't ever be done as long as we are journeying through this life. But the story of our lives does not need to be written as the sum of our bad habits and sinful tendencies. We have a very great Savior who has paid the price of our redemption and who invites us into his life and into the light of his love and who calls us to be holy and pure. And he gives us all the means to become who he created us to be through the church and the sacraments. So, what are we waiting for? Maybe it's time for us to do some window washing and start to get rid of some of those bad habits. But do you know what's not a bad habit? Hitting the like button and sharing this video. And while you're at it, maybe subscribe if you're not already. I'm Matthew Marku and from all of us here at Pure Witness Ministries, God bless.